Hey guys, got a few things I want to share with you today, a uh, personal note and thing like that. Uh, I'm going to start with the wood pile right here. What I'm working on is next year's wood for the greenhouses. And you see I got my little truck loaded down again. This is my third trip today. There's a lady, got some property about three miles from here. And had a lot of oak trees blown down from when the hurricane came through back in September, Hurricane Irene. And so I talked to her and she told me I could go in there and uh, cut the trees and stuff that were laying down. So that's what I'm doing. So I cut them up and uh, load them in the truck, bring them back here. My buddy brought a splitter over yesterday. So I was able to get some of it split up without having to do it by hand. But the point of this is to remind you again, if y'all remember last year's wood came from the tornado that came through here in 2008. Blew a lot of trees down. And I was able to find those trees. They, a lot of them were pretty dried out. You know, some of them kind of rotted. But I was able to get enough wood off of that to make it through last winter. And now here I am again stocking up for next year. And all the wood right here comes from a hurricane. At the time, when Irene was blowing through here, uh, I didn't see much uh, benefit in it whatsoever. But God knows what He's doing. Everything He does is for a reason. Everything that happens around you, it's for a reason. There ain't no accidents. Uh, you may not see it right now, but something good will come out of it. It might be a blessing to your next door neighbor today. And two years from now, something may happen and then uh, all of a sudden it was a blessing to you. You just never know how things are going to turn out. But this is what I'm working on right now. Some of this was cut back in September. You can see on the outside they dried out pretty good. That will be my emergency for March uh, just in case I run out for this year. But right now, let's go see what's going on in the greenhouse. Right here is my pot choy. It is done pretty good. We're going to be eating this stuff here shortly. Here's some butterhead lettuce. I think I planted it just a little bit too close together. Right here is some cabbage. Uh, two rows of cabbage and then some broccoli going down the center of them. And basically I got the same situation I had last uh, winter regarding soil temperature and a little bit slower growth. This is the south wall right here, which I didn't uh, anticipate it being that big of a deal because it gets so much sun I figured it would heat the soil up. But apparently the air temperatures outside, the outside ground is so cold that seeps on the ground. And that's why this outside row is much smaller than the inside row. Got a few radishes just popping up and some bright light Swiss chard uh, just coming up too. A little bit of kale. Got two different kinds of carrots in this box. Purple on the left side and some red atomic on the right. Alright, right here in the second greenhouse, the new one, I got some onions coming on. My little granics right here. Candy onions right here. We got some yellow straight neck squash. A little bit of squash is coming on there as soon as the flowers open up. I see males and females on there, which would be good. I'll hand pollinate these things and won't be long. We'll have some fried squash. Right here we got some Parthenon zucchini. Little one coming on there. This stuff, I don't have to pollinate. It does its own deal. I got a few mini pumpkins right here. Just going to try them out just for fun. Lady uh, gone to YouTube sent these to me. Here's my garlic. These uh came from Melody Rose out there on the west coast looking real good right here some elephant ear garlic that Misty sent me I transplanted them just like I do my onions right here it's uh, something they've had in the family for quite some time and I'm kind of honored to be able to attempt to grow it out and keep it going I got a few peppers going on right here got three cayennes got three camelots Still got them in the black pots, trying to let the roots build up a little bit more before I put them in the ground, and also to keep the soil just a little bit warmer. Got a few strawberries growing. Still trying to figure out what to do with these things. I've only got six. I'd like to do a little hydroponic setup with them or something like that, but I don't quite have enough plants to do that right now. Right here is a look at the big beef tomatoes. I already got little tomatoes down in there. And Lois Laney, this is actually the plant that has the, uh, the Zamzo organic uh, feed in it. Looking pretty good. 
just some beautiful fruit clusters on there. Some of the others, the bush beef steak, the beef steak, and the Jubilees right here, just coming on. Not quite as fast as the big beef, but they weren't transplanted or put in the bags uh, as soon either. Got a few Black Beauty eggplant. Right here I got a few Charentas, which is that French melon. Uh, glow Orbit sent these to me to attempt to grow them inside the greenhouse here. I'm going to try. Got a few cucumbers going on here. Got some Diva and some Tasty Jade. Right here I got a yellow ox heart. And these were actually the first ones to set fruit. I'm expecting a pretty good sized tomatoes come out of there. And I got a couple of Big Mama hybrid paste tomatoes. The bow hunter sent me. And he was right the way the leaves do. They just naturally want to curl up. He warned me about that. So it's no big deal. It's just something that the plant does naturally. Nothing wrong with the nutrients or anything like that. Right here is a few of the Rutgers that were planted trench style. I already got a little tomatoes coming on here. Looking pretty good. Real quick follow up on that last video with the tomatoes. Uh, somebody had requested putting a bag around one of these that was already trenched just to see what a difference that would make. And also uh, to maybe come up with a different, cheaper way to do this if you wanted to put uh, something above ground to hold your soil in to try to get more root growth. Does it help? I have no idea, but there's only one way to find out. So what I did, I just took one of my grow bags, about 35 cents, cut a round hole in the bottom of it, and I'm going to take this plant right here. It's one of the ones that's been trenched, and just slide my bag down over it like so. And we'll put a little bit of a soil mix in there get that situated. If your plant wasn't quite so tall, you just roll your bag down a little bit. Real quick, easy to do. And now basically you're set and as this thing starts to grow, you just unroll a little bit, fill it up, unroll some more, fill it up till you end up, you know, all the way up here with the equivalent of a five gallon bucket but for about 35 cents. That's a real quick way to do it. Won't cost you much either if you want to do a little test just to see if it actually uh, made any difference. So I got it filled back up with soil now. I got you know about five inches in there. Got my strain back on it. And you can see a comparison between that and a five gallon bucket. If you want to try to put a bucket around there, you got to wait a good while before you can do that. So. I think if you wanted to try something like this, it'd be better off to do uh, a grow bag or maybe a small trash bag or any kind of plastic bag that you could just put down here and start filling up and then just unroll it as you go. But this is quick and easy, nice and simple. We'll see what happens to it. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up this time. And I just make a couple of comments about this plant and tomato deal again. Uh, based on the, uh, the feedback from uh, everybody, uh, it sounds like it doesn't really matter which way you plant them, plant them down deep, plant them in a trench. The most important thing is what you're planting it in, meaning the soil and uh, what kind of nutrients you got there. Put it in good soil and you'll be fine. Uh, another factor is the moisture. Uh, if it's going to be really dry, you need to put them roots down deep if you don't plant on water. And if you have access to drip irrigation or a way to keep them uh, wet during dry times, then you know trenching might be the way to go. Either way, there's no specific one way to, to plant tomatoes just like anything in garden. There is no one set way to do it. Uh, there's too many variables involved and the thing is to go with what works for you and what you're comfortable with. What I'm just trying to find out right now is how the roots grow and where they grow at. Do they grow, will they, will they grow consistently along that stem if it's up in the trench? Or is it basically the same thing when you put it down in the ground deep, you still only get a couple of inches right where the, uh, the stem comes up out the ground. So I learned a lot from you guys, from your, your comments and things. I had no idea so many people were planting in a trench. That just blew me away. I just assumed everybody just dug a hole and put them in the ground, but uh, I'm still learning too. And to the four people who uh, got so excited about a different way to plant tomatoes, and went to click the thumbs up and they hit the wrong button over there on the side of it and they went the thumbs down. Y'all just slow down next time. Don't be in such a hurry. 
and move your cursor over just a little bit and uh, we'll get it right next time. Y'all take care and we'll see you.